If you've ever struggled with finding the time to grow your Etsy print on demand shop, or if you're not quite sure how to maximize the time that you do have, welcome to part three of a series where I walk you through the time blocking strategies I use to efficiently build my six figure Etsy print on demand shop in just pockets of time. Today's time block is all about batching the mockups from all the designs that we made in part two. So if you haven't seen the first two videos of this series, make sure you go check those out because the research and design that we did in those time blocks are going to directly influence the steps that we take in our subsequent time blocks. So what makes this different from other strategies you may hear about when growing a brand new Etsy shop from scratch? Well, I happen to run an entirely other handmade business full time which means when I set out to grow a brand new Etsy print on demand shop in time for Q4 back in 2022, I needed to be super strategic with the small amount of times that I had to work on it. In case we haven't met yet, my name is Mandy and as the owner of a multiple six figure businesses, including Etsy print on demand shops, my goal is to provide you with strategies to simplify the journey and scale your business faster so that you can thrive with print on demand. If you're just joining in, the purpose of this series is to cover how I spend my time in what I call time blocks and the very intentional activities that I accomplish in these small pockets of time in order to move my shop forward not only quickly, but effectively. This includes things like researching trends, design styles, and keywords, then using that research as the basis for my design process, then getting all of those designs into mockups super efficiently, and then finally getting them all created as products with my print provider so that they can be sold on Etsy. As a quick recap from the last two videos, remember my focus from the research was looking at a sub niche for an additional section in the dog mom shop that I specifically built for using on this channel. We discovered together that the Doberman Pinscher dog breed would be a good direction to go based on Etsy searches and competition. Then we looked more intentionally at trending styles, market demand on Etsy based on keyword searches, gaps in the marketplace, as well as products that are currently selling. And while we were searching, we also made notes about some strong keywords that we encountered that would also make good additions for our titles and tags once we get to those later steps. Then in our last design video, we took that research information and inspiration and I took you behind the scenes while I batch created a bunch of new designs in that particular niche. And remember, it was all influenced based on the research that we had done ahead of time, as well as some design styles that I already know from past experience have sold well. For these videos, I'm using roughly 30 minutes as the benchmark for the time blocks, but in actual practice, it often depends on what else I'm working on and what's on my schedule for the day. I might have 30 minutes to spend on my shop, or I might have the rare but totally glorious two hours where I can work in batches and knock out full sets of listings. Even if I happen to be sitting and waiting for an appointment for 15 minutes, guess what I'm doing? I'm researching from my phone and jotting down some notes in my notes app where I'm constantly collecting ideas and trends. And even if I'm out and about and happen to see a cute phrase or something like that, that can work well for a design. That way, when I sit down and actually do have a longer time block to work on things, I can jump right in because I've got examples and lists and some energy around different ideas that I can start to draw from in the process. It's a bit of a mindset shift and all about effectively using even just little blocks of time in your day to prioritize actions that are going to help ultimately move your shop forward. And the beauty of time blocking and breaking tasks down into different sections is that it ensures you can focus on one particular part of the process much more efficiently because you're essentially repeating the same process over and over and over again. And if you do happen to have more time available, you can always combine the time blocks or simply do more in each. For example, if I have a full hour to work on my shop, I might spend 30 minutes on design and then the next 30 minutes in transferring those designs to their mockups. Remember, each of these different time blocks have different skills associated with them. Some of them you might be able to do faster than others, and that's okay. The more that you practice these skills over time, the faster you become and the more you're able to accomplish in less time. The goal is progress, not perfection. So let's dive into part three and start making some mockups, shall we? Depending on the products you're using, there are a variety of options for mockups and places you can get them. The first obvious choice is your print provider. They will have some that are associated with the brand and the product that you're using. It can vary, but in general, I don't recommend them for Etsy simply because statistically, they just don't convert as well with Etsy shoppers for mockups in this particular style. 
Another option is placeit.net. That is another great one that I've used. However, I typically only use it for non-apparel items because they do have certain products like totes and mugs and blankets that do match pretty well with products from Printify. I don't tend to use them for apparel as much though because unless I can find one that specifically matches the brand I'm using, customers will sometimes notice those small nuances in cut, color, or style if you just try to use something generic. One example is this one. You can see it just looks like a normal sweatshirt. However, if you look closely, you'll see that it's not the normal sweatshirt like this one where the seams are at the shoulders. It's actually got a raglan style. So you wouldn't want to use this for a Gildan 18,000 because that's not what the sweatshirt would actually look like. So that being said, my go-to for mock-ups has always been Etsy. And to find them, you can simply type in the product that you're searching for. So if we want to do Gildan 18,000, we can search mock-ups for those, and we will see a ton of different options from a variety of sellers. And when you're looking for mock-ups, you'll see a few different options. One of them is for flat lays, just like this one, where the product is, as the name sounds, is laid out flat with some sort of backdrop behind it. The other style you'll see are these lifestyle model mock-ups where the item is actually being worn by someone or nowadays created by AI. Again, no right or wrong, and you could even have a variety depending on your budget, but my preference has always been model mock-ups. Again, for the simple reason that conversion is pretty much always better for those. Customers like to see the product as lifelike as possible so that they can visualize what it will look like for them. And again, if you're on a budget, look for shops that have bundles or like these whole shop bundles where you can get access to their entire shop for really good prices. There's again, a lot of different options out there depending on your settings, depending on the audience that you design for. For today's mockups, I'm going to pull in some that I've purchased from Etsy. And so the first thing we'll do is head to Canva and get organized. For this example, I'm going to have my designs on the Gildan 18,000 sweatshirts, and so I'm going to build a mock-up file with those sweatshirt mock-ups that I have available. We need our Canva template to be optimized for our Etsy listing photos. So when I create a new file, I'm going to create a custom size, and it's going to be 2700 pixels by 2025 pixels and we'll create a new design. Then we're going to add in all of our mockups that we've got available, not just the ones we want for a single design. I keep all of my mockups together for a brand in one file. And to do that, we'll simply start dragging and dropping. So I've uploaded mockups that I've got and saved and I re-uploaded them into Canva. And so I'm simply going to keep adding pages and I'm going to move them all over just like this. If you've got mockups that extend beyond, so if you double click on this, this one happens to fit, but some mockups when you get them are kind of tall or skinny or they're very wide. If you double click on an image, you can move this up and down and adjust if needed. But otherwise, we're just going to keep dropping these in until we've got all of our mock-ups in here. For a handful of my colors, I also have holiday styles. So if you've got those, if you've got any that are flat lay versus a model like these, add those. Like I said, anything and everything that I have that is related to a Gildan 18,000, I am dropping them in here. And then we can always rearrange and move stuff around at the end if we need to. But this is the process that I do to create my initial template for all of my mockups so that they're in one place, optimized for Etsy and easy to get to. Then I'm just going to save this with the brand and then I'm going to just say template so that I don't accidentally overwrite it. The other template that I make sure to include in here is a size chart. So I've just got this one in here for now. And then I've also got care instructions that can be included as one of the listing photos as well. You can add in color charts. Some shops like to have a discount in there. Essentially, whatever you think you might use as part of your listing photos, save them all in here. But at a minimum, you want your mock-up images and you definitely want to make sure you have a sizing chart. 
a quick note on color charts. They are great if you are planning on offering a ton of different color options or if you don't have a mock-up for all of the colors that you plan on offering for the product. That being said, I generally recommend sticking to no more than six or seven color options and I say this for a few different reasons. Number one, you saw that I have a lot of different color options in my mock-ups. I prefer to have an actual mock-up of each color option. Buyer conversion rates are statistically higher when they can see the design on the actual product that they want to purchase. Which brings me to reason number two, which is when I get to the listing phase in Etsy, I link the matching listing photo mock-up to the actual color option in that variation drop down so that when a customer clicks on that drop down and selects a color the photo that they see on the listing will also change to that photo and they can immediately see what it will look like on that color and number three there's actually a psychological phenomenon referred to as decision fatigue it applies to a lot of things in life, but particularly with retail and e-commerce. There have been multiple studies that show when a consumer is presented with too many options, it can actually result in them becoming so overwhelmed with choices that they actually abandon the sale. Not good. Or they might say, you know, I think I'm gonna think about this. There's so many great color options. I'm not really sure which one I like and wanna pick. I don't wanna make the wrong choice. So I'm gonna think about it and I'm gonna come back later. The problem is they often don't also not good. In either case, we want to give that buyer every reason to stay on that listing and complete their purchase right then and there and remove any potential barriers to that sale. So keep that in mind when you're thinking about your listing photos and your mock-up choices. Once we have all the pages in for this brand style, I'm going to come down here to the little grid view. And this is where I can rearrange it. And while at first glance, this doesn't seem to matter, it will make future steps a little more efficient down the road. So typically a size chart, I'm moving to the very end. I'm actually going to move it in between where some of my seasonal mockups are simply because I don't use those very often. Same thing with care instructions. I'm going to move that down here. And then these are all fine where they are at. To get out of this grid view, we can double click on any of these. I'll click on the first one and that'll bring us right back to the top. I actually just realized that I'm missing my sand color. So I wanna make sure I add that in. If you need to move any of these around in here, you can just move that little up or down button. Now that we've got all of our images in here for the brand that I'm going to save under this template, I'm going to do one more thing. I'm going to click on this little edit timing button. It looks like a little clock. The default is five. I'm going to change it to one and then I'm going to click on apply to all pages. Why did I do that? Keep watching and you'll see my little listing video trick at the end. So once that's set, we've got this saved as our template and now we are ready for the actual designs. But don't use this file for your actual designs. What we're going to do is we're going to copy this by going to file and make a copy. If you do happen to accidentally start putting designs on here or you delete some of the mockups thinking it's your regular design file and you're moving things around, I've done it many times. I guarantee you will too at some point. If you have Canva Pro, you can go to file and then you can go to version history. And because this one's brand new, there's not a whole lot of history, but if I were to look into any of my original files that I have for my regular mockups, you'd see there's a long history in there of changes. I've added things and I've had to go back several times and restore a previous version. So if you have Canva Pro, don't panic. It's still there. You can get to it. Otherwise, make sure you make a copy. And then we're going to go into that original file that had our 12 designs that we made in that last video. And what we're going to do is we'll go to share. We'll go to download. We need to make sure it's a transparent background. It's a PNG and we want all 12 pages in this case to get exported. So we'll go to download and we'll let that pull up. As this saves, it's going to go into a zip file. And so all of the designs will be together because I'm exporting them all at once. And remember, this is also why I design in batches. And I tend to keep my niches and my themes together as I'm batching. So that way, when I export it, they're all going to be together in a folder because when I have this zip file and then I unzip it to save it, you'll notice that they are all together in one 
folder. All of these little habits add up and result in helping you to be more efficient and organized without really having to think too hard about it or add in a lot of extra steps. So we've got our file now and I'm actually going to grab all of these and I'm going to add them into Canva. So why don't I simply just copy and paste them from the design file onto the mockups? So here's the thing. I spent a lot of years working in process improvement, lean process, Kaizen process, Six Sigma if you've ever heard of it. And what it ultimately comes down to is efficiencies and time savings. Copying and pasting means I'm adding in clicks or keystrokes from one page, then I'm clicking back and I'm adding them to another page. Or because these are all separate elements, I'd have to stop and group all of them or hope that they stay together if I copy and paste them onto the mockups and then go to do the transparency setting. It doesn't seem like a whole lot and none of those steps are hard or time consuming, but they do add up over time. So instead, I upload them all at once. And then when I'm ready to actually be in my file, then I click on them once to bring them over. As we do a few of these together, I'll show you how fast it makes the process. So I've got my mock-up file. I've got all my designs in here. Remember, I copied this over. So there's going to be extra mock-ups in here that I don't need. I'm going to keep the ones that I want in this file and I'm going to simply delete. I can select multiple if I want to by holding down control or the command button if you're on a Mac. And you can simply go in and delete the ones that you don't want. What I'm looking for is to get down to 10 pages because remember on Etsy, you only get 10 spots in your listing photos. I've got all of my colors here. I don't use maroon a whole lot, so I'll get rid of that one. I've got 10. If I look at my designs, I might look and see, are these all going to work on the colors that I have? Some of them will, some of them won't. Some of these will kind of play around with them as we go. But for now, I'm going to stick with these eight basic colors. Once I have 10 and once I've got everything ready to go, I'm going to click back into that first one and then we can simply start adding our first design. So this first one, I will simply click on it from my uploads and then we're going to shrink it and I'm going to center it. When we end up placing this for printing, it'll be a few inches below the collar line. So we just kind of eyeball it a little bit to make sure it looks centered and where it should be on the shirt. Then we want to make sure we come up here to this transparency button and we want to lower it. I generally land somewhere around 80 is good. If you're on a darker sweatshirt or if it's a slightly darker mock-up, you'll want to bring it down even lower, something around like the 75 mark. Why do we do this? Because if you're using a print on demand and selling apparel like this, it's pretty much all going to be done with direct to garment printing which means a color absorbs into the fabric and doesn't sit on top of a shirt like it would with vinyl. And so as we're going through and as we're adding these to mock-ups, we need to account for the fact that it's not going to be as vibrant and really bright in person as it might appear on the screen. If you have the design on your mock-up too bright, you're probably gonna get a customer complaint when they get it because that's not what it's gonna look like in person. I have a whole video on direct garment printing and how to set your customer expectations. So I'll link that for you so you can check that out if you haven't seen it. Otherwise, once you've got your transparency adjusted for one, most of the time it's good for the rest. Again, you might have to make some small adjustments. You might have to adjust sizing here, but I'm literally just going through grabbing each design and simply pasting it onto each one of the shirts. And so as we scroll through, we're just going to adjust slightly. Again, I tend to just eyeball it. If it's at an angle, I might adjust it slightly. But we want to get it as close to realistic as possible. And so we're just going to keep going through. We'll add these in. Sometimes, again, I might have to make it a little bit bigger, a little bit smaller, depending on the mock-up. If there's hair in the way on a mock-up, sometimes I just do the best that I can. If you lower your transparency a little bit more, it's not too terribly noticeable. So that's just one thing I look for when I'm actually buying mock-ups to begin with is making sure there's not a whole lot of hair in the way, particularly for the female mock-ups. We'll adjust those. Like I said, I'm just adjusting these as I go. 
This one is probably going to be a little too pale for this ash color mock-up. And so for this one, I won't need that and I'm going to delete it. Same thing with this white one. I'm simply going to delete this one. And then we are down to our size chart. So that is the end of the mock-ups for this one. I'm going to name this file. We are literally done with this design. So I'm going to name this file. I'm going to call this one Adobe University. I'm gonna call it white letters just so that I can remember down the road that that's what this one is. Then I'm going to export it as a PNG. And just like I did with the mockups, I want them all together. So I'm simply going to hit download. I obviously don't want these to be transparent. So I'm going to download it as is. You can see we're at eight pages. If we have to be less than 10, that's okay. Sometimes if I have other variations of a mockup, I might leave them in there to get 10. It just kind of depends. It's not going to be a deal breaker. You're not gonna get penalized if you don't use all 10. Again, I'm all about efficiency, so I get what I need. If I'm a couple short, it's no big deal. We keep moving on. So I'm going to save this. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to unzip this file because now we're up to the listing video trick that I promised to show you. In this particular case, we have eight pages. Now remember, we already set our pages to one second in length. Sometimes I notice that it disappears from the top here, but just know that if you set it in one place, it's already there. If you're like me and you happen to notice that it disappears randomly, all you need to do is come down here to the show pages. That'll show you each of the, the pages that you have, and you'll see that these are each one second, and that gives us eight seconds in this file. If you need to adjust it and you don't see this up here, see it comes back when I turn this on, you can always just grab this and adjust it down here as well. So that's just my little quick tip if it disappears on you. Otherwise, most of the time you don't have to worry about it. Again, we already set that over here as part of our template. So once we're done with that, all we need to do is come up to share. We're going to go to download and then instead of PNG, we're going to click on MP4 video and we're going to download it. And then when it asks you where you want to save it, we're going to go back into that file that we just saved with all of our mockups, double click on that. And now you wanna save it in that same folder where your listing photos are. So we're going to save that. And now when we view that original mockup folder, it's got not only our listing photos in there with our mockups with the design on them, but it's now also got our video in there. So that means when we get to that actual listing step, everything is ready to go for this one listing. But remember, we're not gonna do that right now. We wanna focus on efficiently moving through this process quickly so that we can create all of our mockups for all 12 of the designs that we made. So how do we do that? The next step is, again, we can simply copy this one because remember those the next couple of designs that we have, are actually going to be in that similar style. So to make this again, super efficient, all I'm going to do is go file, make a copy. I'm making the exact same copy of what we already have. So that when I come over here to my uploads, instead of then having to fuss with every single little design again, I already have this mock-up structured in a way that's going to work for several of these subsequent designs. So let me show you what I mean by that. So let's grab the next one. And we literally just start dropping. All of our transparency is set. All of our adjustments for angle and size are set. So I'm literally just flying through these and can do them very quickly. And literally in less than a minute, I've got a whole nother listing ready to go. So I'm going to come up here. I'm going to rename this. I'm going to do color letters. And then we're going to repeat the process. We're going to download first as a PNG. Save that. Share one more time. Download. MP4. Save that in the folder. I'm going to unzip that real quick while it's downloading. Once it downloads, I'm going to come into the color letters one this time, save that, and another listing photo round is done. Repeat the process, file copy, and we're going to do it again. Come over here to downloads, and then this one has the actual customization with the name in there, so we're gonna pull all of that over very quickly, very easily. 
And this one, because I have that white outline, remember in the designs that was intentional so that we could include these on other colors. If I really wanted to get creative and have these available on like a white sweatshirt, for example, I could have gone back in and I can add an outline to this part so that the white stands out, but I'm okay with these for now. So again, we're going to save this one. I'm going to call this one. I'm going to add a name to the end because this one has the name on it. Share it, download PNG, save it in the downloads file, come back up, download it again, MP4, save, unzip this one while we're waiting so that that folder is ready to go. Grab this into our name file, save that one and we'll do another one and then we'll repeat this process. And again, you can tell all of these are only taking about a minute. I can actually go faster if my computer was a little bit faster. And that's really the only thing that I'm waiting on in this case is going through this process and saving. Saving actually takes the longest amount of time for all of this. Again, we wanna make sure all of our designs are centered here. We want to make sure it looks as realistic as possible as we're going through them. As we save this one, it's got a heart, so we'll name that one slightly differently so we know which one that is. Download, PNG, save. Save our file. Save it one more time as an MP4. Unzip this file while we're waiting. Head back into our heart file and save the video there. Super easy, right? So what happens if we've got some of our other designs that aren't always going to be exactly in the same style? So let's make a copy of this one and let's look at some of the other designs that we'll be creating mock-ups for. So we've already got four done and so we've got eight more. And what I'm going to do is because, again, I'm already working within one style, I'm gonna actually look and I'm going to grab some of these other ones that I know are going to be running across the shirt like this. So then now I'm actually gonna skip a couple and I'm gonna come up to this trekking one and I'm gonna start with that one. So you can see the design placement was a little bit different on this one. And so I'm gonna move this one down just a little bit so that it's right and I might actually shrink it just a little bit. But otherwise, we can keep the transparency the same and um, for the most part, it's going to be pretty similar. I actually like this green on green effect and we've got our outline on this one. So again, we don't have to worry about losing our colors or our letters in the design on this one. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna make this just a hair bigger and we'll keep scrolling come down to the next one. Same thing with this dark blue. We'll adjust here. The angle and everything should still be about right. She's got a lean in this one, so we've got it slightly at an angle here. Again, we want it to be realistic and we want to adjust this based on the size of the shirt that they're wearing too. She's wearing it oversized, so that means this design is going to take up a little bit more space. And so we're just watching all of these little details as we go. If we need to adjust our transparency and it, make it a little bit different, we can brighten it up a little bit. But again, I don't want to go too high because depending on the colors that I'm using in my design, it's not going to be as super bright as you might think it would be. And so we want to make sure that the customer expectations are set for these and that they're not thinking they're going to get some really bright, loud design that's actually going to be fairly muted due to the printing process. So we're going to grab that one. I'm going to keep moving that one. It's in the hair a little bit, so I'm going to just slightly adjust it. You're working with something like Photoshop. I know sometimes you can kind of fix some of those things. Again, I keep it very simple. We're in Canva. We work with what we've got. So I'm gonna move that one, pull that down just a little bit. And now with this one, I've got outlines on this design. So I can add in some of those lighter colors if I want to. So if I wanna do that, if you don't still have your uploads handy, all you need to do is grab it over here and copy paste it. Otherwise, if you still have your uploads while you're working on that, you would simply just need to drag that in. 
if you're doing a copy paste, sometimes it won't always go into the background. And so if it doesn't, you can just say set image as background and you might need to delete this first one. Every once in a while, Canva hiccups and it doesn't do what you think it will. So it's there. You sometimes just need to play around with it. So again, we've got that. And so now you can see this design stands out well, even with that white outline. So we'll add that there. And then I'm going to also add in a white one. So I'll add that there. And then we just need to adjust the angle a little bit, bring that up, shrink it down a little bit. And now for this one, we are back up to 10 pages. So for this one, I'm going to call it Adobe Trekking. And so we can share that. We'll download, same process, PNG. Save this out in our downloads. Pull down another MP4 file. Unzip this one while we're waiting. Head into our tracking folder. Save that. And now we can go to another one. I'll do this thankful one because that one also has an outline to it. So we'll go make a copy. And so it's because it's got that outline, I can do that on this same file. So I'll come back here to uploads and then just start dragging that thankful over here. I can see with this one, I feel like that's a little bright still. So I might need to lower that a little bit and I might adjust the size on this a bit. Sometimes I'll look at where the collar line is as I'm setting this. And so use that based on how I want the design. So then when I actually go create the product, I'll have a good idea of where that design should go. We'll go to the next one. We'll go with thankful, add that here. If it ever gets stuck and you can't move this little box, you usually just need to click out of it. Again, sometimes Canva gets a little finicky, but it's still by far one of my favorite tools to use. And again, this is why I use Canva for this process, just like I did with the design process to be able to move quickly and to be able to scroll through these designs and simply just drop them in or copy and paste or add a page. I don't have to create a layer. I don't have to create a whole separate file. I can just keep working and I can move quickly through the process. And it makes a world of difference, especially if you're trying to do a bunch of these and you don't have a ton of time to work on it. You want every single little second to count. It doesn't mean that we're rushing through it. I'm not rushing at all. I'm not flying through. I'm not being sloppy. I'm still making sure that I get the design and the placement accurate. It's just that because this is a very specific and intentional process, it's efficient and therefore goes faster. And so we'll keep placing these. So we are done with another one. And we can call this one Don't Be Thankful. We'll go to share, download, repeat our favorite process, save this back in our download file, kick off our MP4, save that, unzip this while we're waiting, head back into our thankful file, and we'll save it. So let's repeat, make a copy, and let's say that we want to do Let's keep going with our words here. And so we've got Mary. Now, when we get to seasonal, if I have mock-ups that are seasonal, I will bring those in. Remember, I did have some saved in this file and I have them tucked after those care instructions. So if I wanted to, let's say, swap out and use this one for the ash picture, I could copy this one, come over here to the file, and then swap out the ash file here. And we can say replace background. And so then when we get there, we've got that. So we've got our Mary. We can keep adjusting this. The wording is a little bit different on this one, so we might need to adjust just a little bit. Otherwise, drop all of these in. Remember, we purposely made the letters stand out and make them a little bit bigger in this case. So we'll maintain that within our mock-up style. 
again, very little adjustment needed because we're keeping a relatively similar placement. Sometimes you just need to move it down slightly depending on where that design landed. Now in this case, again, we've got a little bit of hair in the way on this one. So I might need to just shrink it and do some slight adjustment. If you get a little bit in there, it's not too terribly bad. If it bothers you though, you can always swap it out. Again, sometimes it just depends. And so for this one, I actually don't like how that hair sits on there. Let's bring back in the original ash. We'll adjust that. Shouldn't have to do too much because it's sitting right there. So let's finish this one out. Add in the Mary there. And then if we go back and look at our holiday mock-ups, let's see what other colors I had saved. We can do white in this case. So let's grab that one and we'll just up this one out that we just did. So again, replace background. So a little off to the side on that one, but we'll shrink that and bring that up and that should be okay. So now we've got that one ready to go. We've got Dolby and we'll just call this one Mary. We'll download that, repeat the process, get our PNG, save that in our download file, and then we'll grab our MP4. And then we'll save this in our Mary file. And there we go. So you can do file, make a copy. Now, since we're still doing horizontal, I'm going to grab this spooky design. And so let's pull that over, make that just a little bit smaller. And then we can start bringing these over. These look pretty good as is. Some of the sizing might be a little bit big. So let's shrink that because I don't think in the final print I necessarily want it quite that big. That one's okay. So we'll keep bringing these in. Shrink it just a little bit. Bring that up. And then I do sometimes use fall ones. And so I didn't have it in this particular batch that we created for mock-ups, but in my full huge mock-up file that has dozens and dozens and dozens of mock-ups, I've got a couple different seasonal mock-ups in there. You don't have to. Again, it kind of just depends on your theme, your style, what kind of design you've got. And what I'll probably do since I uploaded a fall one is I might swap out the Christmas one. So if I've got a fall one over here, let's grab this one and we'll just bring that over. And so we can adjust that here and this one will have fall. One of the other things that I sometimes like to do, especially if it is seasonal and I only have maybe one or two mock-ups available, you don't have to have a seasonal for every single color. In fact, don't. It's it's not needed. It's not necessary. Have a couple basic ones for your seasonal items and call it good and rotate through those as I needed. But be, again, to make our listing process faster, what I will sometimes do is if I go into this grid view and I grab the seasonal one, depending on where it landed in my grid, if I move it up, and then when I actually go in and I'm saving it, and this one will be Adobe Spooky, oops. And we'll save that. Then when I actually save this, this seasonal one, because it's in that first placeholder, will be the first one there. So then when I upload into Etsy, I don't have to move it around there. It's already placed for me. So again, just one of those small little time savers that adds up and really helps with your process over time. So we'll save that one as our fall shirt. Save that. Save it again as MP4. Unzip. Save the video in our spooky folder. And then we are good with that one. So let's make another copy. We've got just a few left. So we'll take a look. Let's do this other horizontal one and just see what that one looks like. 
So for this one, I'm actually going to, again, bring back over my non-seasonal. If you don't have it in your recent uploads, again, this is typically why I then also have my original template in here as a tab, just so I can copy and paste if I need to. Same thing with the design. If for some reason I need to go back and make a minor adjustment, it's all right here and open. I don't have to go dig. I've got, again, set up for success when I'm going into a time block, making sure I have it all ready to go. So let's grab our other design. Let's say we're going to do the Doberman and we'll bring that in. And so for these, I don't generally make these spread really huge. This is more of kind of a simple minimalist style. And so we keep it nice and simple in the middle there. Same thing, can grab each of these. Again, I'm gonna shrink it just a bit so that they're not really huge. Make it about the width of the collar just so that it's got a nice image. So again, depending on what design you're working with, I know that these dark Dobermans are not gonna show up on dark colors. So I'm not going to use my dark colors for these. Same thing with navy. That's not gonna show up when it's printed. So I'm not gonna use those black not going to show up. Again, if I have other variations of different mock-ups, definitely bring those in if you want to really fill out your photos, but don't feel like you have to. Sometimes I may only have five or six or seven of my listing photos used, and that's okay. So we'll keep going. That will be fine on gray. I don't think I want to take a chance on this dark gray. I think it's going to be a little too close because in person, this dark heather gray can be pretty dark and I don't want to take a chance. So let's keep it on these lighter colors. Center that, shrink it just a little bit more. And then those are good. So again, not too much time. We still have six photos, so that's perfectly fine. And so I'm just gonna call this one Adobe Images. Actually, I'm gonna call this Adobe Row Images just so I know which one it is. Share that, download PNG, save that, grab our MP4. Unzip that one while we wait. Save it with our row images. And let's make another one. Next, since we have our lighter colors here that we're working with, I'm gonna grab another one that I know is primarily just gonna work on lighter colors. So let's grab this larger Explore one. So we'll grab that, bring it over. Because this is a bigger design, we wanna make sure we fill that out and fill that space. So we'll expand that and we'll keep going. Again, when you kind of think about the designs that you're working with and as you look over at your design set you're bringing in for mock-ups, take a moment, pause, and think about the order that makes sense to do them in so that you can be efficient and not have to stop and go back and forth with a lot of it. Sometimes you will, and that's just the nature of having a bunch of different designs that you're creating all at once. But again, minimize that where you can, where there's opportunities to create and leave your tabs across the top so that you can reuse them as you need to, or if you do need to do a little bit of copy paste from your original mock-up template, you can do that. But having that all ready and available is going to make it much faster. So we've got our Adobe's. We're going to call this our Explore Conquer one. Save that. And again, I know that these aren't going to work on darker colors because this is a darker coloring in the design itself. So just be mindful of that. And you'll start to get an eye for which colors work for which type of shirts and colors and which ones don't. And so we'll save that. Download our MP4. Unpack our zip file. Save this in our Conquer folder. And then we'll do another one make a copy so we have this pink one left and we have the pocket one left so let's start with this pink one because that one's going to be the most like what we've already designed and so let's pull that one in that should look just fine on white 
we want that nice and large again kind of like that monochromatic trend that we saw when we were doing our searching with this particular style i'm going to leave this on the sand one and it's a little bit light but again in this particular case that was kind of part of the trend so i'm just going to bring the transparency back up a little bit just to make sure this still stands out but that's actually how we would want it to look according to the trend that we saw so then we can do it on the next color again i'm okay with that one with the light pink because we were going for more of that kind of washed out light monochromatic look we'll make this one just a little bit bigger so that it's similar to the rest and this one i think will still work on a dark color so i'm going to add that in and i'm going to let's try it on black and see how that looks in this case i can just copy and paste it so then we already have the transparency there and that actually works pretty good so we can add in a few of our other darker colors i probably won't do all of them but let's see how that looks so we've got the black one and then let's add in dark gray i think would work and I think that looks nice on the dark gray. So we'll shrink that just so that we get that bottom part in there right. And then we're up to eight. Like I said, I don't know that I'll do every color. Let's try blue and see how that works. And as I said, I don't use maroon a whole lot, but in this case, I think it will actually work well with our design. And I actually like how that works. Again, thinking about monochromatics, could also do this on kind of a darker pink or even a purple would look nice. Guild in 18,000 has a nice bright purple that could work. But I'm gonna stick with the colors that I mostly use. So let's go with that. And that will give us 10. So we can save this one. We can just call it positively save that as our PNG and then we'll head up and save that again as our mp4 and what I love about these video listings is that you've already got the mock-ups done so you're just you're not having to take any extra steps you're using what you have but they can make a difference and help you stand out in the search results because as a customer is scrolling through their search results for any listing that has a video attached to it it will automatically start scrolling through the video when they hover over your listing. And so that movement catches a customer's eye as they're scrolling and helps attract them to your listing. So that is why they have become super important. And that's why, because it's this easy process, I pretty much have a listing video on every single new listing as I make it. I haven't gone back and added them to my old listings, but definitely all of my new ones have it because it takes less than 60 seconds to do it whenever I'm creating the mock-up. If you find, if you test your listing and you go out and you find your listing and it seems like it's not scrolling when you hover over it, it usually means that you haven't adjusted the time setting for each of the pages. And that's why I wanna make sure that as you're looking at your listing, as you're looking at the duration, that you wanna make sure that they're all that one second because if you have especially that first one or two if those aren't set to one second it's not going to start moving or if you set them too long or if they're at that default five seconds you're not going to hover long enough for them to start moving probably so you want to make sure that you're using that one second in your timing to get it to scroll quickly and start right away for the customer so then for our last one is this pocket design pocket designs if i've got them i typically do them at the end just because they're different and the sizing is going to be very different so again we're back to having a darker image so i'm going to go through and i'm just going to remove some of these darker mock-ups that i know are not going to work well for that darker color and so again sometimes i have listings that only have a few colors and only have a few photos in them and that's okay so when we've got our image remember when i designed this i just kept it the same as all the others and that's totally fine so when i pull it over though it's obviously going to fill up the whole space 
And quite frankly, if you wanted to have one of your designs be a large center image like that, you totally could. This would absolutely work as a regular design, but I want this as a pocket design. And so I'm going to shrink it. And so for this one, anytime you're doing pocket designs, they're going to go on the left side of the chest typically. And so when we're looking at it on the screen, it's going to be on the right side. And to line up pocket designs, you want to go roughly down the center from where the outer seam of the collar is. So that's right here. It's harder to see sometimes, but just kind of visualize and imagine where it would be. And then we're going to go down to the center. So you're going to eyeball it roughly there slight angle for this particular mock-up and then again we just kind of want it where we would imagine a design being on the left side so that looks about right for this one and so for this case I'm not going to keep dragging it because I want to retain this smaller shape so for this one I am going to just do a copy paste I can delete that one and I can bring that in here. Same thing, I can straighten it out for this one. Again, sometimes you just gotta kind of eyeball and see where it makes the most sense. I mean, you're gonna know if you've got something like that, that's not where it goes. If it's too far over here, you know, or something like that, that's not where a pocket design goes. It goes right onto that seam of the collar. And you wanna make sure it's not too huge on the design because if it starts bleeding over into the center line of the shirt it's not going to look right and it's not how it's going to print generally either because when you get to the actual creation of the product you'll see it roughly where that's going to be printed and so you want your mock-up to match as closely as possible so we'll come through and again we're just copy pasting on each of these adjusting slightly as needed to make sure that they look like they're in the right spot. We're gonna tilt this one just a little bit, make it just a tiny bit smaller. Move that over, so again, collar is right here. So we're gonna go roughly straight down at an angle from where it is, and we're gonna place it there. And so again, because we're only using a few colors, we only have a few photos in here, that's all we need to do. Even if we had a few extra mock-ups in here, it's the same process. You're just doing a straight copy and paste of the design each time into what you're working with. And I just wanted to adjust this one slightly because we did make the other ones just a tiny bit bigger. And so this one, I'm gonna call it Dolby Pocket Name because it is it will have a customization to it. And then we're going to save this and this is our last mock-up so we now have all 12 of our designs done and ready to go save this last one off get our final file with an mp4 unzip our last project here save that in our pocket folder and that's it and just like that we now have 12 sets of listing photos and their companion listing videos ready to go, saved for our next step in the process. That next step will then actually be creating the product with our print provider, in this case, Printify for my products. So make sure that you're subscribed so that you can see the rest of this time blocking series. I hope this has been helpful for you. If you wanna learn more about my strategies for thriving in your print on demand business, make sure you've got the notifications turned on for my channel so you don't miss out on any of the upcoming content. And in the meantime, make sure you check out my dedicated playlist with my full print on demand masterclass course right here on YouTube. Thanks for watching. I'm so glad you're here and I'll see you on the next time block. If you're looking for more helpful ways to continue the work and stay connected, I invite you to join me over on Patreon where I provide a membership to get exclusive access to my Google Drive with all sorts of wonderful tools and resources that I've created and continue adding to every month. It's also a place to join conversations as I think about future content and how I can serve you with the most amount of value. I also hope that you'll smash that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on all the exciting upcoming content that I've got planned for this channel. And finally, I invite you to check out my brand new website where you can subscribe to my own email list, follow along on new blog content that I will be building, and access other freebies that I have available on there to support you on your journey.